hello again. Um, well, I was treated indoors today because the weather here in North Wales is a bit iffy. We've had showers. Um, it's sunny right now, but it's a bit breezy, showery. So I've come into my little uh, den, which is where I used to paint. I haven't painted for a while, so it's a, <laughs> a studio, you could say. But um, yeah, today it's a quick vlog, another quick uh, photography, film photography vlog about the uh, the camera that started the Lomography revolution, the Lomo LCA. I've got two of these. Um, this is the, uh, the original. So uh, this is the uh, an original. Is that in focus? Yeah, this is an original Lomo from the Soviet era, 1980s. Uh, I got this recently, actually. I saw it on Facebook Marketplace um, for £20, which is very, very cheap. And I asked the lady who was selling it if she'd post it, and she did, for a fiver. So it came, and it had the notorious sticky shutter. So what sticky shutter is, is basically you wind in on your film, you shoot. Oh, hang on, i got to open it up so. You wind on your film, you take a photograph, uh, everything's hunky-dory, it clicks, carry on, fine firing. You take a roll of film, take it in to be developed, get them back and there's nothing, <laughs> they're all blank. And what's happened? Well, what's happened is the shutter isn't opening. It's winding on and it's firing, but you've got a sticky shutter, the shutter is seized, basically. And nine times out of ten, it's not um, a problem with the shutter itself, it's an electrical problem. If you look at the Lomo, um, you've got the battery compartment, if I can open it without fingernails. Yeah, the battery compartment, let's get that closer. Can you see in there? It just has these three um, cells, basically, and that's the uh, the terminal. Yeah, it has three cells with a terminal at the end. And with lack of use, the cells, uh, degrade, uh, they corrode the terminal, you got a bad connection, so it's quite easy to cure actually. All you have to do basically, get new batteries obviously, open it up, get a um, sandpaper or preferably like a little mini file, and rub away and rub away. <laughs> So you've got rid of that green corrosion. Sometimes it becomes quite pitted. And what helps in that situation is get some cable like this. This is, I think this is about 16 amp cable for plugs, etc. Um, strip a sheath of wire. So you've got a piece of copper wire. Get a pencil. Coil it around the pencil, snip it off. And what you've got then is like a little mini copper You've got a little mini copper washer basically. So what you do then, slip it in to against the terminal, put your batteries back in, then you've got a snug fit. And of course copper is a brilliant conductor. And um, that is a that often helps actually if it's quite corroded. So basically it's a corrosion problem. I can't shut the let's go there. Yeah, basically it's a corrosion problem nine times out of ten. So if you buy a camera or you can pick up a cheap Lomo, which often is sold on eBay and it says sticky shutter or shutter not opening or whatever, uh, it's often worth a gamble. I've bought quite a few actually and fixed them and sold them on. Um, yeah, that, often that's worth a gamble. If you can, if you can pick one up cheap, uh, it's worth a, worth a risk actually because often at nine times out of ten, that's the problem. So what is the Lomo? Well, it came out. It's a copy of the Japanese Casino CX, and it's um, it was that copy almost, and it's a automatic camera. You have a distance scale on the side, four settings from infinity right down to, I think it's one point five meters. It's a fixed speed. It's a six, it shoots at sixtieth of a second. It's uh, you, you can adjust the apertures manually. You have a little little. Uh, Leave it on the side, but everybody, most people, just keep it in automatic. And yeah, set it on automatic, uh, just to mess around and find your distance and fire. Um, for example, 
if I wind down, there's no film in this at the moment, uh, pointing at that light, if you can hear this, you'll hear it quite a fast. Now if I point it down, hang on, where is it? You can hear it's much slower. Oh, there's a cat looking at me. <laughs> Hello cat, <laughs> ginger cat. Mr. Bent here, it's Bent is here. Yeah, sorry, it was, uh, came from the Soviet Union in the 80s. I bought one in the 80s for 20 pounds. Had it for a while. I remember it had quite quirky results actually. Um, high saturation, vignetting. Um, it was it was quite quite agricultural the build and it didn't last long and it broke. I can't remember what went wrong with it, but I gave it away to somebody and forgot about it. And then in the nineties, um, I was reading in the Guardian about how these Viennese students had come across the Lomo, and they were so taken by its quirks that they uh, they set up the Lomographic Society and. Um, Eventually they bought the right to make these cameras and it's now a private company now, the Lomography Organisation. And they don't just make Lomos. This camera what I paid for £20 in the in the 80s is now £330, which you can get a good decent DSLR for that. Yeah, and the Lomography Organisation, they're making, well, tons of cameras now, all sorts of weird cameras. I think they're making the Holger now, which is the Chinese camera. And they're no longer made in St. Petersburg. Uh, they're now made in China. So the company's based in Austria. I think the lenses might be still made in St. Petersburg. I might be wrong there, but but the camera itself is made in China. And the Lomography Corporation are making all sorts of variants of these wide angle. You can get ones with an Instax back, which you, you can slide off the back, put on a instant Fuji Instax back, clamp it on, and take instant films like Polaroid type films. They make all sorts of weird things like the pocket rocket and sardine tin <laughs> cameras and a 360 degree camera, which is like a spinning top. You pull a, you pull a wheel, you pull a cord and it spins around and takes a 360 degree. Yeah, they make it all sorts now. It's a private corporation. But they're still making the Lomo, it's still here, and it's inspired a well, a huge photographic movement. And there's a lot of people that really love these cameras. Um, the uh, Mexican guy, whose name escapes me, is he Mexican or Spanish? Eduardo. He's got a great vlogging channel, I'll put his name here. Yeah, he wrote one of his favourite cameras, he loves them. And... Uh, in fact, he was out in Manhattan where he lives now um, with one of these Instax backs on a Loma wide. And um, yeah, it's quite interesting. It's worth looking at that vlog. So yeah, it's a fixed focus, has four um, ASA range. It ranges from 25 to 400. Uh, so it doesn't go super fast. Um, four distance zones. Uh, three cell batteries and basically that's it. Now I recently I've taken some shots with this recently. Actually not this one. This one. This uh, this has got this has got a film in so I won't take it out. This has actually just got a Zenith label on. Some of them are just Zeniths were made in the same factory. I don't know why they stuck as let Zenith. But this is a Soviet era camera. And it's got a colour film in at the moment. But I recently took a black and white film out. And uh, I shot, well, quite an eclectic range of um, places where I shot. In, on the Thien Peninsula of North Wales. In Salford, on the edge of Manchester city centre. And in the Cotswolds, in the heart of England. And um, I shot them on a Fomapan ASA... 100 pro fine classic film now this is made in the czech republic it's one of the one of the cheapest can you see that yeah it's one of the cheapest films you can get actually but after saying that black and white film is not cheap and uh, i developed the film myself and i'm going to show you the results in a minute um what i will say there's a backstory to how i developed the film I did a recent vlog about the 
quite glammed the camera and uh, I sent the film off to be developed and I got a message back saying terribly sorry um, the uh, had problems with the uh, developing tank all your films were fogged so they were totally F U C K E D and uh, you know I was gobsmacked really I was you know I was really looking forward to taking these photographs in the Peak District by this 60 70 year old German camera and the guy had ruined them so I said sod it if you want a job doing do it yourself so I bought rebought all the gear it's last it's uh, I was in my 20s last time I did black and white developing and I'd given all my gear away sold it I had nothing left so I had to buy all the gear again the developing tank the chemicals everything and uh, so I had to go back on a learning curve to remember and relearn how to develop black and white film. Yeah, I was quite pleased with the results actually. So here they are, without further ado, take a look at these. <laughs> I was very pleased actually. Um, you're always worried when you're developing a film that they'll come out. Uh, you might, you're frightened, you've screwed up, and you're just going to get a blank roll coming out. And it's a lot of work actually. I mean, I found the biggest problem getting the film out of the canister in inside the changing bag. By feel, you got to open the can, get it on the spool, get it in the tank. You got to do it all by touch, by feel. That was the hardest part. Once it's out and in the tank you can seal it and you can work in the light then and then it's just a question of getting the chemicals right and uh, getting the temperatures right getting the times right and uh, it's a great thrill I'd forgotten what a thrill it was when you get the film out and you hold it up to the light and god you've got images and it's a fantastic feeling so uh, yeah I was pleased for the first attempt in, in well since Adam was a lad a long time ago in, if you're interested in film developing, then there were. This was a developer. It's um, Photo Speed, I think it's called. Yeah, Photo Speed developer. It's a one-shot developer. That's what you use it once and throw it away. Um, this is about just under twelve pounds, and you can use it on the ratio of one to nine or one to fourteen, and. Uh, it takes, well it works out about under a pound per film, which is not bad, because black and white developing is bloody expensive, and there's not many places that will do it. Um, I used Ilford, Ilford Stop Bath, Ilford Stop, which uh, is a stabiliser to stop development. Yeah, so that's cheap, that's reusable. And finally the fixer, that's from Ilford as well, Rapid Fixer. So they were the, um, they were what? They were the uh, chemicals that were used in the developing of those prints. And uh, I can't wait to do some more black and white photography. I'm sure you've heard of, if you're into photography, film photography, you'll be, all, you'll be very familiar with the Lomo. But if you're not, and you're interested in film photography, this is a great little camera. I mean, it's very small. And it's uh, something you can stick in your pocket. It doesn't have an extended lens. You just open up the lens, the shutter, to take. Is this the one that's empty? I've got two. Got one with a film in and one without a film. I've got the right one. And uh, 
I should put a label on, shouldn't I, really? <laughs> I'm going to forget. I'm going around with an empty camera. I've done that before today. Gone out shooting a roll of film. I remember going out climbing with a mate. We did a great route called Main Wall in Sunbearers Pass. Classic route. Brilliant day. Fantastically photogenic. And my friend was taking photographs and posing in these precarious exposed positions. And when he got back, <laughs> he had no film in the camera. So we were really pissed off because I thought, oh, it would have been some fantastic images. Uh, so it took us a great big exposed photogenic climb but anyway so anyway I hope you found that interesting um, if you buy a camera and you've got sticky shutter you know what to do uh, developing if you're interested in black and white developing it's not hard definitely recommend that it's fantastically satisfying and uh, I'm definitely hooked as far as developing my own film now I've also got bought a colour film set never done colour before so Watch this space, I'm going to talk about colour developing soon. So, I think I've covered everything. Uh, yeah, so thanks for watching and I hope you find it interesting. And I'll probably be doing some outdoorsy soon, although I've just got another camera, so I might slip in another film camera vlog. And this is a bit different, it's a camera that I've never had before, a type of camera I've never had before. So, watch this space. Okay, see you then. Thank you.